Hello everyone, this is Robert and this is my project for the day. This is a planter that I have in our entryway and it does not sit flat due to the natural slope of the deck for drainage. So what I want to do is print a foot extension for the foot down there so that this thing will sit nice and flat and level and doesn't look weird. Not all 3D printing projects are glamorous and crazy and going to blow up on printables. So I wanted to kind of do this as an example of something very simple that would be a very practical application for 3D printing and kind of walk you through my basic design process. So let's get started. So I'm going to freely admit there's about a hundred different ways to solve this problem and probably 90 of them don't require a 3D printer, but that's kind of not the point of this video. The point of this video is just kind of walk through the design process and show how you can make a really simple 3D printed part that is based on something that is existing. This is one of the little feet that the pot sets on. These are called pot toes, or I think I've seen them as like planter legs, things like that. I have a link down below. We have a bunch of these on all of our planters just to kind of keep them up off the ground to allow for better drainage. So what I want to do is just kind of create an extension on the base of these that just lifts it up. So we need to find out the angle that's going to be right, how thick that's going to need to be, model this up, and then 3D print a little foot that sits on the bottom of it. So let's start with trying to figure out how thick that part needs to be. So this is kind of difficult to see. There's not a really good place to put the camera, but the bubble is all the way over on this side and we kind of need to be eh, I think about like that. So I've got some wood shims. I'm just going to throw those underneath and we'll get a good idea of how much this needs to be raised up. So that is about perfect. So now I have an idea of how much that needs to be lifted off. Let's go take this part and do a bunch of drawings and figure out all the dimensions for everything. This is always kind of my favorite part of the project is figuring out what dimensions I need, getting this modeled up and putting this into SolidWorks. I think it's always fun to kind of key off of all these dimensions and ultimately try and figure out how this part was actually designed. Now, if you've seen other YouTube channels where they create drawings and diagrams and it looks like you could take that and frame it and put it on the wall, you're going to be very much disappointed. My sketches are not like that at all. They're extremely rough, extremely ugly, and they're just functional. So let's take a look at this part. So basically what we're trying to do is just create a little foot that comes off the bottom. I just want this thing to look factory like it's just taller. Simple as that. From measuring the shims, I think it was about six and a half millimeters. So if we kind of do a cross section of this, the foot is gonna be 6.5 millimeters taller. And there's this slant, which kind of makes this difficult. So I'm just gonna key off of this little face right there and just come off of it. I'll probably end up using these little um, nubs right here just to kind of make it look a little bit cleaner. So the first thing I'm gonna do is measure this internal geometry here. So we're gonna start with a nice, beautiful triangle, and I'm gonna measure that distance. I probably need calipers for this. So that's gonna be a radius. We're not gonna to worry too much about that right now. Okay, so 42, nice. And then we're gonna kinda of get this width. And obviously we have these radiuses here. I'm not gonna to worry too much about that because what we'll do is we'll create a construction line in here that just kind of keys off those corners anyway. So not a big deal. We'll just kind of try and take the largest distance we can. That's about 36. And then we'll measure all these radiuses separately. But first thing I always forget is how deep can we go in there? I think we can go in, eh, I think, like, yeah, about five millimeters. Cool. And so that is kind of this inside dimension. So we'll have a little protrusion that goes on the inside, but then we'll match this outside dimension. And that's pretty easy with just like an offset. So that's going to be a four millimeter offset there and there. Yep. 
And then this back looks a little thinner. Yeah, 3.3, 3.5. So we'll have a 3.5 millimeter offset on the back. I'm gonna do another triangle here for the outside. Look at how ugly this is. This is how I sketch everything. I know what it is. And so now I wanna do this outside from here to there. That'll give us an idea of the large diameter. 56.25. So that'll be the outside. And then, yeah, I think we just measure all these radiuses. I'm gonna measure this one because it might change, but. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Let's get the handiest, handy radius gauge set and measure all these radiuses. I've talked about this a lot in my previous videos, but having a radius gauge set makes this a lot easier. And if you're only gonna get one, I would definitely recommend getting a metric gauge set. I have a metric and a fractional, but the metric is just far more useful for me and what I do. And I do have a link down below where you can just 3D print your own as well. I definitely prefer having the metal one, but you can also 3D print one if you're only gonna use it occasionally, but they're not that expensive. Links to all this stuff down below. Using one of these radius gauge sets for kind of these inside corners is just something you kind of have to get a little bit of practice with because you're not gonna be able to perfectly match that inside radius. You're really only trying for like that tip, if that makes sense. For this inside, you really can only measure the top of the radius because it's not a perfect 90 degree. So you just kind of use the tip and kind of nudge it in there and see what looks right. And when it looks right, it will look right. If it looks like there's too much of a gap or it's overlapping too much, that's probably not the right one. You just kind of have to keep trying different sizes until it just feels right. And now the next thing is I am going to measure these little, I don't know, insets right there. I would like it to snap into those. We're getting fancy. Why not? So I'll just kind of put those separately, do another really ugly triangle. The top ones are going to be a little bit interesting. I'm going to see if they're all the same size. And 9.7, 9.7. Yeah, so they're all about the same size. And I usually, for something like this, I'll go undersized about 0.2. So I'll go with that 9.5 instead of 9.7, just because we want a little bit of wiggle room. So that'll leave 0.1 on either side. That'll be a nice snug fit. This one's obviously gonna be centered and it is the width of that wall, so no big deal there. These are a little bit trickier. So we gotta kind of figure out what dimension we wanna key off of. So I'm gonna do this bottom corner right there keyed off of here. So we can use the end, actually keyed from the outside. And 19 and a half. So that'll give us our dimension from where it starts and then where it ends and that little bit of slop, it'll be just fine. So yeah, let's bring all this into SolidWorks and I'll show you how we're gonna model all this up. So here we are inside SOLIDWORKS. I was always trying to think of the best way to show you this information. And whenever I do 3D modeling on camera, it just kind of ends up being a lot of clicks and grunts. So I figured I'd build it and then just kind of step you through each one of the features so that you can kind of get a better idea of how this part is built. So we start with this first sketch, and this is kind of the inner body that's gonna go inside that little foot. So you can see we have our radius up top, we've got the radius down here, and then that one dimension where we just kind of measured to the biggest outside portion, that was 36 millimeters. So you can see I just kind of have a construction line that hits the tangent faces kind of on the outside, and then this face here. The way you would build something like this is pretty simple. You would just kind of do your general rectangle or your triangle, that's not a rectangle. We're gonna set these as equal. Then we're going to do a center line. I'm doing exactly the thing I said I wasn't gonna do. So here's our triangle. And then what we can do is just add a radius up top. Yeah, that's gonna get kind of weird. So that's gonna be 6.5. And then what we do is we just kind of drag a new construction line, I'll take that one away, and drag a new center line from here to there. And then we can define that 
as the specific size, right? So we measure that inside at 42. There you go. Now we can add on our radiuses on the outside of three. Do another one there. Yep. And that's how you would build something like that. And then we can just simply add another line from there to there and define it. So pretty simple stuff. So we're going to delete all of that. So that is the first solid body. Then we're going to add this one. So now you can kind of see this is the inner one. That's the outside foot. And if we look at this sketch, I basically just kind of did an offset. So we can select a body, do an offset, set the offset, and let's just do 10 just for grins. So we can do 10, but if I delete this, then I can go and define it further. And when we do something like this, we can select this and that and make those tangent. So pretty simple stuff. So we're just basically building a sketch that is offset from it, three millimeters here, three millimeters there. Actually, that's wrong, four millimeters. Thanks for catching that. And then this one is, actually this one is three and a half, 3.5. So now we have that sketch. The overall height was 56 and a quarter. Those were actually three and a half millimeter radius. So now we have that piece. We're just gonna add a little chamfer. Whenever I have a part that fits into another one, it's a really good idea to have a nice chamfer so it'll kind of slide in better. This will be a relatively tight fit, but that chamfer will help it kind of slide in. Then we're adding another chamfer around this edge, eh, just to make it a little bit prettier. And then we have these little bosses. And these, you can see, are my nine and a half millimeters wide. There is that 19 and a half dimension. And we're just hitting the inside of that chamfer because we don't really need to come out to the edge. And then we're gonna get a little bit fancier with it. I'm doing a sketch in the middle that is kind of taking out the inside. Usually with 3D printing, you wanna figure out what material is useful and what material isn't useful. So I just selected this, did an offset entity on the inside. Let's see, I think it did like a, what, two millimeter? Two millimeter offset radius to those corners down here and simple as that. Then that cuts through the whole thing. Now we just don't have that material in the middle, which is not necessary. And then finally, we're just adding a little chamfer all the way around that edge and that bottom edge. Typically, I find that a quarter or a half a millimeter chamfer is enough to just kind of break that bottom edge and prevent you from getting any elephant foot. So pretty much as simple as that. Let's go ahead and print this out and test it and see if it fits. So while this prints, let's talk about filament selection. Since this is gonna be outside, it's gonna be exposed to UV, it's gonna see a decent amount of heat since I get a lot of direct sunlight in this location, and it's also gonna be under a constant load because of the weight of the pot. For all these reasons, PLA really just isn't the right choice. You could use it and it would mostly work, but it really is the wrong choice for this. PETG is the next obvious choice, but quite frankly, I really just don't like PETG that much. It doesn't print that well. It doesn't look all that great. I kind of don't like the shiny texture on it. And it's really not that UV resistant. So I'm going to go with ASA. I got this roll of Galaxy Black ASA from Prusa, and I absolutely love this stuff. It prints beautifully. It looks very similar to their Galaxy Black PLA, which is kind of my all-time favorite PLA filament. So I'm gonna end up using that. ASA is UV resistant, does totally fine in high heat, high sun applications, and it is a good structural um, filament, so you can use it when it's under load. This is gonna be no problem for it. Whenever I approach a project like this, I always have to remind myself of my mantra, which is what's the problem we're trying to solve. All I'm trying to do is make sure that this pot visually looks like it's level. It just has to visually look like it's not tipping over. So a simple foot like this, this is a 20 minute print, is the correct solution. Sure, I could design and develop some, I don't know, multi-legged adjustable 
pot system thing that could go on printables, but that's just not really what the purpose is. If the purpose is to get a lot of views and have a fancy clickbait thumbnail, sure, maybe that's a better project. But for this, I'm just trying to make it so the pot doesn't look like it's tipping over. And as a content creator, I think you kind of always fall into this trap of trying to overdo something or make something fantastic or really neat or blow up the internet or have a really popular model on printables. But for this, it's a 20 minute print. It's really simple and it will make the pot look like it's level. And here is the finished part. Turned out really nice. Um, I'm really liking this Galaxy Black ASA. Prints so much nicer than Pet G. Let's see how the fit is. Nice. So yeah, that works out perfectly. Everything lines up. It looks like it's meant to be there. I think that's going to work out great. Let's put it on the planter. One of the other reasons why I wanted to keep this design so simple and just do the foot extension is because the underneath side of this pot is very irregular. I made sure to keep the pot in the exact same orientation because even moving this foot over a little bit makes it not level. But as you can see, having it in this position, it is level in both dimensions and I'm very happy it looks appropriate. It doesn't look like it's tipping over. So for those of you that are already very familiar with 3D printing, but really haven't taken that next step into designing your own functional parts, hopefully this gives you a little bit better idea of what that process looks like, because this is just a really common task, at least for me. This is something that I use my 3D printers for all the time, and this is what the process looks like. So hopefully someone got something out of this. As always, thanks for watching. Check out the links down below, and I will see you in the next video.